<laughs> okay. All right. So Miles, for context, so we were talking. Uh, Salsa needed to put uh, install an update on his car, and uh, he's running a lot of uh, shit simultaneously. But <laughs> apparently, you not appearing made the bandwidth okay, <laughs> and then when you suddenly appeared, it got shit. <laughs> That's I was little. Like, because I was like, I, I set it up 40 minutes ago, and I was like, I, I was like, I'm sure it will finish in time, and it just hasn't, because it's like a a 37 gigabyte down oh, thing I have to download. Car? <laughs> yeah, I have to download it off of Hyundai's website onto a USB that I'm then gonna put into my car, and fuck knows how long that's gonna take. <laughs> she. But I'm just downloading it for now, and I I was like, it won't finish in time, and then I see Miles is gonna be late, and I'm like, okay, blast, I can finish it. And then as it's downloading the last gigabyte, you hop on. <laughs> and the rate actually slowed. It's done now. <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, man. Uh. <laughs> Before we um, begin, Miles, have you seen the <laughs> amazing digital circus? Not yet. I've been meaning to. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. From what I've seen, it looks really good, so... Yeah. Uh, you've seen Murder Jones, right? Probably. I think I just need to see an image of it to remind myself, but... I'm pretty sure if you go... Just wait. You know what, I'll just do this real quick before we start right there. But, Another... like, the clown girl is everywhere on the internet right now. Yeah, it's just nothing but fan art. <laughs> She's the new internet waifu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say it. It's better than the last set of clown girls that were on the internet. <laughs> oh At yeah, true. Those, you know that one was just straight from porn. So yeah, yeah. So this is murder drones. Wait, we're sharing oh. porn now. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the characters, but I've never actually seen where they're from. Yeah, the show. Uh, okay, so murder drones and the digital circus are done by the same studio. I want to say. Uh, yeah, it's a studio. It's called Glitch. Okay. But yeah, Digital Circus is pretty good. Murder Drones is pretty good. Check it out if you enjoy, uh, content like that, I guess. Just full-blown animated features done by small creators. I love that shit. Injected right into my veins. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole playlist going back for ten years just backlogging animations I found on the internet. <laughs> I think it's up and to... And now you have them all, you can use... You can scrape them all with AI and make <laughs> your own animator. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> it is too late. I have already hacked your account and found your playlist. <laughs> Miles like, uh... <laughs> Ayo, send me that, <laughs> that playlist. <laughs> yeah. Throw them into mid-journey. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> all right, in so... mid-journey, describe this for me and then make something with the description. <laughs> <laughs> moving, I love doing that. <laughs> moving out of uh, the ex existential horror of AI, let's move on to a different kind of horror. Ha ha! Another class A segue by me. <laughs> please laugh. <laughs> please point and laugh. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm 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 definitely not recording yet. Uh, I I'm recording. Don't worry. Oh, oh are you recording our audio? To... Yes. Don't worry. I wow. have it so it's multi-tracked. So, you guys are on a separate track from me. Huh. Yeah. So, I guess I didn't need to re-download Audacity then. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, that's why you had Audacity up, I was wondering. What the fuck else was I gonna have Audacity up? I just felt like recording background noise while I was downloading my shit. Maybe! Yeah. <laughs> I don't know! I just, I just really, really wanted to test my bandwidth. <laughs> it's... Uh, one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time is uh, fucking Alpharad, the, the, the YouTuber Alpharad, was playing back when he was playing Smash Bros, but he he, he didn't want to, like, get banned by using a real lag switch, so right. he, he made the homemade lag switch, where he just torrented ten movies at the same time on different tabs on his computer, <laughs> and then went into ranked mode. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright, well, I guess this is good enough for a cold open, again. Man, I feel yeah. like I've had this conversation before. Isn't that right, Nathan? <laughs> We've had this conversation, like, 
2,611 times just trying to redo the Skull Island podcast. True, true. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah. Welcome back. Long Calling Podcast. Again, you know us goons. Uh, and yeah, I guess in celebration of Spooky Month, we're talking about cryptids. <laughs> I thought we were talking about porn. I, I mean, I, depending on which part of the internet you're on, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> the Windusi it calls. I'm like, somebody go there trying to get the Windusi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so gentlemen, for today, well, an outstanding start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, the only thing I get from that is like the movie Teeth. No. Oh. <laughs> oh no. It hungers. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Man, I remember a friend tried to make me watch that. It's like, why? <laughs> it's not good. Man, that's what I heard. <laughs> that's what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, and my snake just yawned at me. He's yeah. not. He's already bored. That, that's one. That's one thumbs down. On, one virtual thumbs down on this video. Ah, oh, fantastic! All right. So uh, yeah, for it's cool. No one can see those. We're good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm okay. Never mind. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I've been wanting to do this kind of podcast episode for quite a while, almost three years now. I kind of wanted to get a group of you guys together, and we just talk about, uh, you know, things that may or may not go bump in the night, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, hopefully we could do this again. Uh, so initially what I wanted to do was kind of uh, focus... Okay, so I had two ideas. We could either do A, an open floor discussion. Just kind of uh, start the conversation at a certain point and just see where it goes from there. Or we can focus on a specific cryptid. And uh, yeah, I guess the initial idea that I wanted to do uh, before I thought about the... Uh, open floor was uh, maybe once every year or maybe twice every year we uh, come together and we talk about the origins of certain cryptids because I think it's kind of interesting to find out where uh, these legends and stories uh, spawn from uh, and you know for today I have Mothman because I think uh, it's probably one of the more plausible stories despite the creatures uh, description but uh, I'm also really open for an open floor uh, I'll leave it up to you guys what would you like to do would you like to do Mothman or do open floor and cover as many topics as we can uh, <laughs> Roll. I have a quick question yeah um, I was in I was under the impression that we were doing like a tier list for cryptids mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> Chupacabra S tier, don't at me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could do that one of these. <laughs> also, I think someone already did a like a cryptid tier list, but uh... oh, it was the presidents of the U.S. That's right, <laughs> right? The <laughs> <EA> president. <laughs> yes. Oh God. Okay, but you know, given what Nathan said, I I'd say that's one vote for open floor. <laughs> Am I right, Nathan? Como estas, amigo? I'll take that as a yes. Uh, what about you two? That does not mean yes. Wait, what does that mean? That means... It means how are you doing, friend, right? No, that... No, that means, uh, what's up? Wait, no. Yeah, you're right. It's... Never mind. I'll text <laughs> I can't even figure this out. Alright, uh, what about you guys? Uh, Salsa and Miles? What are you feeling? Mm. They're feeling Mr. Krabs. I was gonna make the same joke. <laughs> One brain cell. <laughs> One brain cell shared among us four. <laughs> what are you feeling, Miles? I think it's probably best to focus on a single cryptid an open floor so it's not just rambling right <gasps> but but yeah. rambling is what makes it fun though a little, a little bit yeah 
All right, what about you, Salsa? You're the tiebreaker, oh, no. I guess. <laughs> oh no, I'm the tiebreaker. Hole, and you know who's really the you know who's really the tiebreaker? Google, <laughs> coin, <laughs> oh, flip. God. Heads, we pick one. Tails, it's open floor. Ladies and gentlemen, we pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks, Google. <laughs> my my man. <mess. laughs> All right. Oh man. All right, well, I guess before we talk about Mothman, there is something I wanted to share with you guys. So, uh... Today's sponsor... <laughs> Ray Chat Legend. Chat <laughs> VPN. Today, download Chat VPN if you want to access all territories and not be spied on by those proxy government drones. <laughs> Sheesh! <laughs> download right. Chat VPN today. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, what I wanted to start with is, you know, in line with this topic, uh, have you guys heard of the recent Bigfoot sighting in Colorado earlier this week? No. I, I think I did, actually. I, if I'm not mistaken, I saw it on uh, Elon Musk's X that has nothing to do with Twitter and is completely not a bought-out app that was rebranded as something else. <laughs> no, no, it was something original. You always plan this. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Uh, well, according to Keikaku. <clears throat> yeah, let me see if I could find the video, but the only reason why I bring it up is because it presents... Uh, I think with cryptozoology, it makes for a really fun exercise when it comes to speculative evolution. Because I look at this video of this thing. I'm not saying it's Bigfoot. I'm also not saying it isn't Bigfoot, but... Um, yeah, I think it's... <laughs> So yeah, if you guys check out this video, you kind of see how with the fur, it kind of blends in with the grass around it. This looks like it was shot in the 2000s. Right? It was... <laughs> you uh, said this was I, last I week? This the other day. Yeah, this I was last this. week. That's Yo, just a fucking, fucking dude. Yeah, what no, did you yeah. film it on? His fucking Nokia flip phone? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like the point oh, I'm trying yeah, to- yeah, that's it, baby. 350% <laughs> digital zoom. I see every pixel. But yeah. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because uh, with cryptozoology, while uh, it's still a debated topic, I think it makes for a fun little exercise when it comes to speculative evolution. Because I think about what if there was a hominid that was- uh, evolved to live out in open areas, like whatever this thing is. When it kind of squats down, you can barely see it. It's almost com uh, perfectly camouflaged. So, uh, you know, it's things like that. And also with Nessie being potentially a freshwater mo uh, plesiosaur and, uh, you know, other watching, <laughs> watching this footage, that is horrible. Holy, a human fucking being that <laughs> yeah, does just... not move. That does not move like any ape. That it's moves like a that moves like shiny? a human. Yeah, yeah. yeah like the first trying to shiny. hunch over, <clears throat> and then and then yeah. No, maybe maybe he's born with it, <laughs> or maybe born he's pretty. like a fucking head and shoulders spokesperson, like fucking. No, it's uh, Doctor Squash's mascot. <laughs> 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 That's All right. right. All It'll right. So I just wanted to share that before we get started on uh, on on today's story, on this year's story. How many times do they show the exact same clip? With different... yeah, because they've got to give it to you with the Nokia camera <laughs> digital zoom to look worse. <laughs> just gotta do them like that. <clears throat> All right, gentlemen. So. uh... Are you ready to get started on this little story? Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty then. So, uh, who here has heard of Mothman? No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> this is that dude has seen like... Bigfoot uh, apparently five... I went to his YouTube channel. <laughs> I, I should mention, this is not the official video, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> still. Can, since we're still on the Bigfoot topic, can I just add my piece? Go uh, ahead. Yeah, sure. Bigfoot has to die. <laughs> what if I told? He knows you? too much. <laughs> I mean, he's already dead. Haven't you seen the classic film, The Man Who Killed Hitler and Bigfoot? 
Or who could forget this classic Bigfoot sighting? Can't shoot Sasquatch throws dog and harasses campers. <laughs> <laughs> Seen the classic Bigfoot video where the guy was molested by Sasquatch and he has a cub hybrid out in the woods somewhere. He's like, Bigfoot took my baby. We had a baby together. She raped me. All these. What the what? Hell? Bigfoot does not believe in consent. <laughs> oh god. We need to cancel Bigfoot. <laughs> I mean, how much chimp is he? <laughs> I can find this shit real quick. I mean, listen, if if a paper is published tomorrow saying that a paleontologist discovered a skull of a hominid that lived side by side with humans over 200,000 years ago, almost a million there, that'd be fucking insane. Uh, I would honestly not blink. I'd be, uh, guess it happened. <laughs> uh, you want to know, you want to hear my incredibly hot take on Bigfoot? Uh, yeah, sure. Go on. <laughs> so, I feel personally <clears throat> that Bigfoot is half-rooted in racism. Uh, because way, way back in the 1800s, uh, a lot of scientists wanted to prove that white Humans evolved from different types of apes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And there was this whole thing to find the North American ape. So or that the European there were different ape. monkeys from the black so, monkeys. Exactly. <laughs> and that's just where this stems from, because only fucking rednecks see Bigfoot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you ain't never catching a Chinese man seeing Bigfoot. <laughs> oh man. You That's my conspiracy theory for Bigfoot. The only Asian man that ever met Bigfoot was Baki Hanma. <laughs> and that's his teacher. <laughs> oh, God. Man, I seriously need to get on Baki. Wait a minute. Was that Bigfoot or was that a caveman? No, that he also fought happened. the caveman. Yeah, that also happened. <laughs> Wait, he fought Nathan... the super caveman, actually. The caveman that once put a T Rex in a chokehold. Wait, Nathan. And then you... ate it. Nathan, you watched Baki? <laughs> I love Baki. Jesus Christ, I need to get Baki. on that then. <laughs> yeah, it's Baki, Yujiro Hanma's my favorite cryptid. <laughs> <laughs> you, Strongest the creature. Ogre. The ogre. <laughs> <laughs> Men and women, they're all the I'm same like, if they're I'm weaker about, than how me. About the, how about the fact that Yujiro Hanma just barely slapped the back of Oliver and it made him go... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're really yeah, big. Yeah, like as far as as far as Bigfoot goes, like I completely like. Okay, a, a, as a scientist, I can't like instantly buy anything, so I'll be like, I like I like your hypothesis, Miles. That feels pretty. I I that's that's a pretty good one. Um, <laughs> how and but I will just straight up say that like Bigfoot, I don't fucking believe for a, a fraction of a second that is real. Because especially with the amount of knowledge we have about how to locate and, like, study primates and apes, <clears throat> and the fact that we've borderline been able to, like, insert humans into ape society for the sake of research and the apes will just take it, the fact that, like, oh, with that kind of knowledge we can't fucking find this, it's like, hmm. I highly doubt no, I agree because with you. Like, yeah. Oh, they're really clever. They're really good at hiding. Then how come in all of the air quotes footage that we see, of air quotes sighting, it's just them fucking trundling through the, the brush incredibly obviously. Yeah. Actually, have, you, fucking isolated. Actually yeah. have you guys heard of this insane theory of Bigfoot possibly being a fourth dimensional being that just hops between realities? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot more. Re yeah, that's the reasonable answer. I can, as a scientist, I can buy that one. <laughs> oh man, it, like for me, it doesn't fucking sit. Fourth, I love the I love the justification. I love the fucking stretches, the leaps and bounds. It's like, is it a motherfucker in a fur suit or a fourth dimensional being <laughs> that resembles an ape? No, yeah, that that's why it never really sits well with me. The idea of higher dimensional beings possibly evolving in the same way as a species on Earth. So in this case, Bigfoot looking like an ape. 
I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me. I think if uh, if a being were to exist in a higher plane of existence, wouldn't it evolve or look different? Yeah, clearly. You see, yeah. if we're talking about fourth dimensional stuff, the human mind wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Yeah. So yeah. it would have to assign something, but the human... We wouldn't assign something we don't understand to look almost human. It would either be like completely alien or a weird looking human, not an eight foot tall monkey. <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing as well, right? It's like, it, it, even evolutionarily, like if it was some fucking fourth dimensional being, right? Evolution has demonstrated that the bipedal, the humanoid body form is not the op. It's not peak performance. Yeah, it would be a yeah. fucking crab, is what it would be. No, but, no, like, yeah, true, true. Um, or so, but like the, the the idea, like that theory, like if we put a brief pause on calling bullshit on fucking fourth dimension, then like there's no shot that it would be a fucking humanoid. Yeah, there's absolutely no way that the humanoid bipedal humanoid format is ideal for navigating time yeah especially dimension. one that can barely walk yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you guys remembered how uh back in the olden days scientists thought that uh the human body plan was the p like the last stage of evolution for all species and yeah, you know that just started a bunch of speculative evolution like hey what if the dinosaurs didn't go extinct and then there's that ever so infamous maquette of this half humanoid troodon looking thing oh, yeah the dinosaur yeah, yeah. Yeah, or whatever they call it yeah, yeah. <laughs> well even now like the we still have like the residuals of that in the industry because like when talking <clears throat> about evolution people will refer to things as like as, as like uh, lower life forms and then like higher life forms and it's like bro that's that's not correct yeah when in reality there's, there's no like there's no higher or lower it's just there's just variation yeah it's, it's, it's all about being adjusted to your environment and lifestyle yeah there are basal and there are more derived forms yeah and there are like primitive ones but like not the other way. Some, I'm getting some crazy feedback from someone. Yeah, it's Nathan. Sorry, Nathan. Oh, okay. Why is it always me? I think it's because you have my voice set to like 2,000% it's picking up on your mic. Alright, well, we'll, we'll just make do what we, we do it live. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me scrounge around for a second and see if I have anything. Professionalism. Um, yeah. Honestly, with well, all... this is a perfect time for a break to talk about today's sponsor, Raycon. <laughs> Raycon Shadow Legends. Block out those pesky <laughs> Windigo screeches at night with Raycon earbuds. <laughs> oh man, honestly, I'm having fun with this open floor discussion. More of you guys are down. Yeah, I feel it's just because because we started on Bigfoot, so we're like, fuck it. I feel like it's not yeah, so much open floor. It's just like. Started we said, with oh, Bigfoot Mothman, comment. but then we started with Bigfoot, and it's like, okay, we're in Bigfoot territory. Yeah, I just uh, wanted... I see what you did there, <laughs> you sneaky bitch. <laughs> it's Bigfoot country. Fucking Rahul, the fucking autocrat over here. Democracy loses today. <laughs> I hate democracy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the system works. <laughs> okay, you know what? I, I think... I think... Okay, depending on how things go... We can do both if you guys want. Let's just let's just keep going. And when 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 the Bigfoot when the Bigfoot well runs dry, we switch to Mothman, I guess. Yeah. No. Or Michigan or the or, man. or the search for the when Dussy commences. <laughs> Actually, it's like one of the topics I have on the open floor. Like I have uh, notes up here. One of them is Skinwalker Ranch. Motherfucker, does... you have notes that. Yeah, for both. That would have been a far better option if you told us that. I, I, no, 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 no. Okay, you okay like, listen. Fuck it. Everyone go in a circle and say something about cryptids. <laughs> and totally no, no, forward. Solso. I have notes for both uh, scenarios. I have notes on the first Mothman sighting, and I have notes for an open floor discussion. I got a question. Can y'all hear me? Oh, dear. Yeah, you're you're really quiet. quieter, but I can just turn you up if, we're, if, if this feed saves the feedback thing. Speak again. Nathan? Perfect. Snake? <laughs> Snake! Yeah, yeah, your audio's cutting in and out. You know what, Again, Nathan? Dropping. Lose the earbuds. 
Can y'all yeah. hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah, we go. Fuck it, we oh, do it live. Yeah. Or you down again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Back Does it sound people. better? Yeah. yeah. Way, way, way better. It's the same problem as before. Yay. <laughs> fuck it, we'll live. We're, 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 we're big boys, we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'll, but I'll, anyway, I'll, I, I guess back onto the back to the top. We, we take school. up. We return to our regularly scheduled programming. Yeah. So going back to the whole idea of Bigfoot being a higher dimensional being, this is why I think the idea of a higher evolved. dimensional being, like what is he? Bigfoot Jesus? No. Uh, uh -huh. Don't don't joke about that. Okay. So I've been listening to a couple of podcasts for the past couple of months. My God. Okay, listen, don't worry. I haven't been converted. All right, I'm still like very much a skeptic, but um, you know, one of them is the Bigfoot. Bigfoot Jesus, yeah. all the way. No, no, no. That's the thing. There was this one podcast that really pushes the religious aspect of things to the point where it's like, oh, geez, are they trying to recruit me? <laughs> Bigfoot is a satanic being. Yes, I know what you're talking about. No, no, I, I, like, one time, I swear to God, they were like, yeah, Bigfoot is connected to the aliens, and the aliens are connected to the angels of the Holy Bible. <laughs> I love that. Fucking, what's oh, the gospel yeah. say? Yeah, I've been <laughs> The gospel of Bigfoot, too. chapter one. It, it's <laughs> <really> <laughs> 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 the gospel of Bro, Bigfoot. Haven't, haven't I, I talked to you about stuff like that before too? And <laughs> fucking Chewbacca like, yeah. 316 out here. That's <laughs> Bigfoot's <laughs> rapture. <laughs> thus, <laughs> thus the hairy man no. took a stick and knocked it on a tree three times. No, there, there, the there, peasants bowed. No <laughs> Says there, the there Lord. <laughs> and then there, they were like, oh my god, this must be the gospel. <laughs> But There's yeah, no it's, Bigfoot rapture. it's just straight to hell. No purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> like the, like this one podcast that I was listening to. I won't mention the name, but it's like <laughs> I they're it was I think Joe they're, Rogan's podcast. No, it was wasn't it. Joe Rogan. Their reasoning was <laughs> something along the lines of we're trying to figure out where these things came from proceeds to quote the Bible. And I was like, uh <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's fine to have like religious uh, connections, but at the same time, it's, if you really want to make a through line, maybe compare it with other religions as well, not just Christianity. I'm just saying. But why? Yeah, that's that, that, like that's, that's the one they want to. That's the the one true faith. But yeah, the <laughs> one that's real. <laughs> no. Babe. Oh God! Please, I don't want to be conscripted. No. <laughs> Everyone knows Bigfoot goes to church every Saturday. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bigfoot is a satanic deception made to lead people astray. Yeah, it, it's funny because... Not my Bigfoot. Yeah, it's funny Hashtag because... Not my Bigfoot. Well, your Bigfoot is wrong. No, 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 it, it, it's actually kind of funny because this podcast I'm talking about, like, one guest will come on and it's like, oh, Bigfoots are, like, synonymous with the angels, according to the lore, and then the next guest they have on on the very next episode is like, Bigfoot is the devil! Kill it! <laughs> it's it's such a mixed it's, message. Bigfoot and I was is like, the, what the Bigfoot fuck is, is the false on? prophet? Like, <laughs> and, you know, it's, like, like, it's all... Away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all sorts of things. Like, oh, these mammoths died during the crucifixion of Christ. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, didn't you see the part where, like, they cr they stabbed him with a mammoth tusk? <laughs> uh, you know what? That scene actually was pretty emotional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you know, where, where oh the it's mammoth, coming up. Oh, fuck. The mammoth died for Jesus' sin <laughs> so that he could die for hours. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh god, you're killing me, for real. Oh Jesus, everything is just coming up now. Oh fuck. Oh. <laughs> Don't take the mammoth's name in vain. <laughs> okay, alright. Anywho. Going, going back to the whole spec evolution thing. <clears throat> the whole reason why I shared that video. And, you know, bringing up the fourth dimensional stuff again. Uh, the idea that cryptozoology can lead to you know fun little spec evolution experiments in my opinion because right. part of me does wonder what would happen if 
a separate lineage of hominids did cross the land bridge into North America? How would they adapt? How would they evolve? Um, you know, there's like the closest thing to Bigfoot we have in the fossil record is like Gigantopithecus. Those shits yeah. get big, really fucking the big. big. The inspiration for Kong. A well, because this is the thing. Well, this is the thing that I'll say. Right, you look at the fossil record and you see those things, and those are like very derived animals. You can see like the evolutionary traits for like the niche they're trying to fill. But like anytime, <clears throat> anytime you see Bigfoot in these sightings, it just has like an exactly human body plan. There's no like deviation in like the limb length or like the diameter or like the the width or height or like breadth or relative ratios of the things. Yeah. It's just straight up a fucking dude every single time. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. you know, like, chi like, you know, fucking chimpanzees, their arms are a lot longer than ours. Their skull shape is different. The ratios are all off because they're ad adapted to different things. And if this is supposedly some, some hominid species that adapted to A, survive in the North American environment and B, evolved to evade detection by us for all of these years for it to have just a bog standard basic bitch human frame doesn't make a lot of sense i guess it depends on the environment itself but uh no i do get I where mean... you're coming from <clears throat> you were gonna say miles well i mean like you got you gotta look at it from this point too like if we can find a chimpanzee troop in the middle of a rainforest, but we can't find a giant eight foot tall, bigger than a gorilla monkey man that That's makes a I'm lot saying. of noise. Yeah. Yeah. In an arboreal forest, which, yeah, is confusing looking. Actually, but like, I'd, I'd say North America's forests are less inclined for such adaptations for arboreal.ism so trying to find them would be a lot easier, arguably. Exactly. That's what yeah, I they'd meant. Be, like, yeah, there's less on cover. The <clears throat> yeah, they're too less... big to hide in pine trees. Yeah, yeah. There's less. There's less cover. So you to too big something. to hide in a pine tree. Uh, <laughs> that's that's proving his point actually, because we're supposed to be smaller than big feet. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Did I just say big feet? <laughs> you did. You did. You <laughs> made him a pearl. Fantastic. <laughs> no, big Bigfoot's like a Pokemon. Its its name is infinitive. The plural <laughs> of Bigfoot is Bigfoot. Is that it's how like, it works? It's not Pikachu. No, I'm talking out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> Look at Dope Pikachu. Like, uh, it's like well, for, for Pokemon it is. For Pokemon it is, yeah. The Pikachu is... had an S. No, you don't. Look at that Pikachu. <laughs> referring to a group, isn't it? Look at those Pikachus. No, look at those Pikachu. Fuck you. <laughs> it's a herd. Multiple times, Ash refers to it as a herd of Tauros. Not Tauroses. Or Tori. <laughs> what is the likelihood of Pokemon being alive in Tauros our time? ends with an S. <laughs> yeah, so many words that end with S get pluralized. <laughs> like, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Just, mm. uh, we're not here to talk about grammar because I feel like I'm gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I pull out of the source like a spell book. <laughs> <laughs> you pull out the dictionary. Oh god. Oh. Uh. Bitch, the thesaurus me fuck. <coughs> Part of Cadabra. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, on top of uh, Bigfoot, pos uh, pretty much, I think we're all in consensus. The thing probably doesn't exist, right? I think it's safe to say we're all skeptics, right? Yeah. I, I, I am not a big, I am not a believer. I'm not a Bigfoot believer, no. Yeah. Now, okay, so when I say skeptic, I mean in general, so not just Bigfoot, but also like Loch Ness, Mothman. Oh yeah, like Chupacabra. in general, I'm a skeptic. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the same reason every time I hear like, oh, they've found aliens, I'm like, yeah, fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what like, if they two found... Days two days from now, this won't be on the news anymore because people will have debunked it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of it's aliens, like that that's thing also with those the fucking discussion. alien remains they found. It's like surprise, fucking surprise. They were actually just humans. <laughs> like no way. You're telling me the weird preserved humanoid corpses were humans? Get Wait out! Of minute, are, are you talking about those weird mummy-looking things? Yeah. Whose anatomy looks very, very wrong. Yeah. Just square shoulders, squared <laughs> hips. 
Yeah, surprise, surprise, they're not fucking, they're not aliens. Dude, I saw that. Arrow 1's free I was like, oh my god, this is definitive proof of aliens. I'm just looking at it, it's like, okay, assuming that this is from an alien planet, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have evolved that way. What yeah. kind of fucked up gravity having ass would they <laughs> right actually that's another question if we were to find alien remains on earth would they preserve well even would they even survive depends in our what they're made of depends what their life is made well, of yeah what that's their exactly life what i mean made out of because like, like uh, as, as humans we are and okay i suppose with our knowledge of chemistry as well we've come to understand a little better that like carbon has special properties that make for good uh, that makes it good. P predominantly, the ability to hold multiple stable bonds is, like, one of the big things with carbon. Yeah. Um, which is why our life <laughs> is based on carbon. It's just a good element for it. Yeah. That's why one of the other alternatives proposed is silicon. Yep. Because silicon is in the same family as carbon, and it's also one of the reasons why we use it in, like, it, it, it has a lot of, it, it can form, like, fucking eight bonds and be stable. It's actually kind of crazy. Yeah. But, um, s silicon, that's why other people have proposed, like, rent... And these are all completely speculative, by the way. These are just like basically like I like like a uh, thought experiments yeah. that like silic silicon based life could feasibly theoretically be possible. But that being said, we also couldn't really imagine it because we it's just not the the, the done thing. And also, typically, a smaller molecule like carbon would be more useful biologically than silicon. But even then, that's with our understanding of it. So, like it, it it's it's. It depends what our interpretation of life is and, like, how things evolved on that other planet, per se, yeah. for, like, aliens and stuff. So, when I hear things like, like, um, what, what was it? I can't remember. It was one of the other, it wasn't Bigfoot. It was one of the other, like, weirder cryptids that someone was like, oh, it's the reason why we can't know about it is because it's actually an alien. And I'm just like, I don't know about that one, Chief. But Which one would that be? I'm I'm trying to remember it's 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 slipping from my mind, but like it, probably at this rate, all of them have been suggested to be aliens. But I can't remember the exact anecdote. Yeah, a good number of them have been suggested to be higher dimensional beings or aliens. Yeah, but that that's the <coughs> thing. It's like it, it and and like you said, it, it would their remains preserve on Earth? Beyond that, would they survive on Earth? Yeah. What are the chances that an alien evolved on an entirely different planet that is capable of surviving? off of the atmosphere and nutrition found on our planet it's pretty astronomical unless there's only one answer to life which is also possible but unlikely yeah because like I ironically mass effect makes a good example of that like a uh, fucking it humans uh all of the proteins all of the amino acids we eat are like there are uh, amino acids can form a, a left and a right-handed version, basically. Yep. And the left-handed versions can't be used in our bodies, and they're basically poison. So, like, all amino acids are the right-handed versions that, like, we eat. Right. But in Mass Effect, there's, like, an alien race that's like, no, they actually use the left-handed amino acids, so their food is poison to us and vice versa. Yeah. Which is, like, you know, it, it, a nice little interesting thing they did. But, like, that, that even that, right? So if, if these cryptids were aliens... They're a fucking alien from life that evolved on a different planet. Like, that's already a stretch. But that same life form can stomach the the nutrients and atmosphere of this planet. Like, that's a bigger stretch. Yeah. A part of me does wonder if there is another habitable planet out there that, you know, at one out of a million chances, somehow evolved life similarly to us. So there's just another planet with arguably Homo sapiens on it. <laughs> it's a thought experiment. It's, I'm not saying it's true. It's just yeah. a thought of mine. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's one of those things where, like, statistically speaking, in an infinite universe, all things would be like all all eventualities will occur in an infinite universe just by the laws of statistics. Yeah. So like that's why it's like I'm I. I I am fairly confident that life does exist in space. I just don't think we have any evidence that we've contacted it yet. Yeah. Simply mathematically, like, it, it's a, it was a really low... It, like, the chances of life spontaneously occurring is very low. But like I said, in an infinite universe with an infinite number of planets and stars, another planet will exist at the right distance in the Goldilocks zone to its star 
with the right compounds on there to form whatever life it needs to form and it'll happen yeah somewhere it's just i i i you know there's no guarantee how close or far that is to us and we definitely have no guarantee that we've met them there's no solid evidence yeah that is publicly available so or that I, i'm aware of i, I just gotta ask uh you know the whole idea of them possibly visiting us you know, put that mm-hmm. aside do you guys think that out there in the vast universe aliens do in fact exist 100 percent. yeah no I, Wait. (laughs) Nathan, why? Because the Earth is flat. It's a closed system. (laughs) Well, there could be another disc out there floating in the void off the edge of our disc. Under our disc. (laughs) Oh, God. Imagine if there's actually a planet that's flat. (laughs) Would it even be a planet? That's like 50% of the planets in Voltron are flat. (laughs) Ah, uh, yes, v- Voltron, my favorite documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peer review. I, I remember, Just saying. I remember hearing a statistic. I can't, I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was along the lines of, uh, even if you had the worst chances of winning, winning the lottery, if you were to compare that with the infinite universe, the chances of life existing on different planets, I think the number of planets that would harbor life in that a uh, statistic is still over a million. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because that's cause again, it, it's it's ju- and hell, even a, a million is still like an, a pessimistic estimate because like it, it it's sort of annoying with the way it, when when they factor literal infinity into the universe because yeah. as an as a mathematical term, infinity is some kind of bullshit. I mean, you know Jujutsu Kaisen, infinity is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> So when 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 there is a zero point zero 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 and then like fifty million more zero one percent chance of something happening in an infinite universe that's it's going to happen and it's going to happen a lot yeah <laughs> just because like it, it, statistically it'll happen yeah it's 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 like that that thing people talk about where like if you throw if if you take apart a computer put it into a washing machine and turn it on. It will eventually assemble a washing machine. <laughs> eventually, yeah. Like, like, it'll uh, uh, our, our computer a computer. A computer. Yeah. The pieces will randomly stick together in the right way and reassemble the computer. Eventually. eventually. No promise how long, but eventually it will happen statistically. Yeah. Because every piece slotting together has a percentage, a, a non-zero chance of happening. So if you do it long enough, it'll happen. So, so that and that's the same logic. So. To digress, yeah, I do think that alien life is out there. I, but like I said, they, we just haven't fucking met it yet. There's no, we haven't met it yet. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! Who is screaming in the background? I mean, to ask that for a little bit. The author. Uh, I'm sorry, my roommates are doing karaoke in the living. Room. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> I I apologize. My favorite cryptid, the banshee. <laughs> That is a cryptid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, wait. Do ghosts constitute as cryptids? I would say I feel yes. Like, I, I, feel, what's, I feel like the definition of cryptid is very loose. Yeah. It is very not, loose. It's not like it's a, like Yuma, which is unidentified yeah. life form. It's like a cryptid is something... I love this. I love cryptid. this definition. Any animal of interest to a cryptozoologist. Oh. <laughs> Fuck up. <laughs> So, okay, wait, this is actually kind of hilarious, because So what... if a cryptozoologist is a dog lover, then dogs are cryptids. Alright, what if... Like, shut the fuck <laughs> up with that definition. Yeah. <laughs> An animal whose existence or survival to the present day is disputed or unsubstantiated. So, Megalodon. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah, that, that counts. Oh, man, the whole Megalodon thing kind of bothers me. Yeah, he's in the Mariana's Trench, dude. Didn't you see the video? Wait, what video? He, he, he's swimming the underneath with the Bermuda uh, Triangle. The one with the clearly not a Greenland shark. Oh, yeah, you the six-skill shark. Okay, yeah, I, I think I know what went on there. Like, even when I initially saw that video, I kind of figured... So, we're supposed to believe that that crab catching cage is actually a lobster catching cage, which are, like, really big cages, by the way. And that the shark is over 50 feet long when it could easily be 
15 feet long. Well, it looks like a... If we're going to Megalodon now, it did look like a Greenland shark, which is a no, big yeah. shark. I, I will say... Th no, not sorry, that good. big. No, yeah, I know that Greenland sharks and actually other six guild sharks can rival some of the biggest macro predatory sharks, uh, i.e. the great white shark. But, uh, you know, the idea of Megalodon still being alive, and not only that, but surviving in an environment that it was not adept for. Um, like the Mariana Trench. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, allow me to run this by you guys real quick. So the problem of Megalodon living in the Mariana's Trench is that A, it is the exact opposite hunting spot that they usually frequent, and B, if they were still alive in the Mariana's Trench, they would they wouldn't be megalodons anymore technically because the animal would have to go through substantial change in order to adapt to such an environment compared to the original environment that was evolved for yeah i was going to say especially for a cartilaginous life form to be able to withstand that kind of ocean pressure like there's no way yeah um uh, I know there's some Can I get species a of shark. Boneless shark? <laughs> I know there's some species of shark that live down there. Uh but I don't Shark think... is a loose term for it. You're thinking like the ninja shark and the lantern sharks. Uh sort of. Like I was thinking also Or the goblin. Yeah, I was Which thinking like goblin, goblin cookie cutter. Shark. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I, I'm I I I was looking further for a better a better like de definition of cryptid, and crypto on the page for cryptozoology, the second paragraph is a paragraph criticizing it for being pseudoscientific, for teaching its adherence to ignore mainstream science and the scientific method, and <laughs> for for converting young people to the theory of young earth creationism <laughs> which stipulates that the earth is 6,000 years old oh man that was something uh, else they discussed they discussed on that stuff. other podcast <laughs> <laughs> anyway wait, back what? to it bigfoot's rapture <laughs> whoa, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Wait, wait, no, 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 please. no let's not go back <laughs> oh, God. oh man Deliver us from evil, oh biggest footest. <laughs> like I said, Most he, beautiful of God's creations. He knocked er, on the three, er, three, three, three times, and it was uttered as the word of God itself. <laughs> oh man! <sighs> and you know, it, like rose, like Bloody Mary, you say it three times in the middle of a dark forest, and the Wendigo comes and fucks you to death. <laughs> I'd see that movie. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna remember that uh, for reasons. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> but, you know, like, talking about the unlikelihood of certain prehistoric fauna surviving, uh, you guys are familiar with the <laughs> with the collection of dinosaur species that are believed to be alive today? Like the Mobabu or whatever? Uh, Mokele, Membe, Ropin, the Pteranodon, and the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> huh. See, the Loch Ness Monster is my favorite cryptid, but uh, no way it's living in the Loch Ness. Yeah. No. Actually, you, you know those wonderful Scottish climate that's perfect for fucking reptiles to live in. Actually, you know that... Uh, you guys know about one of the first stories that involved the Loch Ness Monster, right? It was like in the 1800s, wasn't it? Oh no, it was like way older than that, I think. Oh, true? Yeah, way so... Way back in the 1980s? I, I think even further than that. All I remember is uh, some poor sheep herder was, you know, taking this flock of sheep down to the river to, uh, to have a drink. And then all of a sudden, this thing just comes out of the water and just grabs one of the sheep and starts eating it alive. Counterpoint, <laughs> he was drunk, <laughs> lost the sheep, and had to come up with a good explanation. Okay. <laughs> oh, you it, gotta it, trust me, laddie, it was a fucking monster that <laughs> came out the lake and it ate the sheep. I'm <laughs> telling you. But why would a Scottish guy have to make up an excuse for being drunk? They're always drunk. Because his wife would beat him if, if he just <laughs> lost the fucking sheep. This was before the Scottish got their infamy. <laughs> 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 okay, so... Here's the thing, I kind of believe the story, but, but, I don't think it's the Loch Ness Monster, because, d 
Do you guys remember when they uh, did that eDNA test of the lock? Oh, I remember hearing about it. Yeah, and one of the most. And I know eDNA is, an, it's an eDNA is an interesting field. Yeah, and uh, one of the biggest hits they got from that. Uh, I guess for anyone listening who doesn't know, eDNA is like environmental DNA. So they sampled like the, the lake water and checked for DNA samples to detect what was in it. it it's an interesting new idea. Yeah, and one of the most prevalent hits they got from that is apparently eels. Now, uh, by chance, has anyone here seen a show called River Monsters? And by the way, yep. this is not cryptid monsters. This is like actual, actual lethal eels. fish I, in the fresh. I know of, I know of it. I I never watched it. Yeah. So there was this one. Episode. I know it very well. Yeah. So there was this one episode from Jeremy Way where he was, um, he was investigating the species of freshwater eel. Uh, I believe it was in New Zealand, but I think the species also originated from, uh, Europe. And these things are actually kind of voracious. So, assuming it's the same eel that took this man's sheep, I'd be convinced it was a monster. <laughs> so, what I can tell you as well is that, like... Eels are a delicacy in England, which obviously ain't far from Scotland. So I I know they like they clearly live there. So like there also could just have been fucking eels in Loch Ness. Yeah, yeah, I hear too. Dude, are you in the same room as them or? No, I'm like in a different room. I'm sorry. God damn. damn, they they blast in <laughs> they, it. They really get your lighters out. Really do singing like Oshinoko. <laughs> Life was dependent on it. How about this? How about this? I get in my car, <laughs> I drive to the store, buy a beer, and then do the podcast in my car. Oh um. <laughs> Does that sound like a better idea? Uh, only if you drink the beer while you're driving. <laughs> huh? <laughs> 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 That's already a guarantee. You don't even have to say anything. <laughs> Part of the course. God I'm damn. from Texas. Like, you have to get, you have to drink and drive in order to get your license, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? It is the way. This is the way. <laughs> it's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the license except through the beer. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, man. Straight to hell, no purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> what, you're not Dante in the story? <laughs> Abandon all hope who is here. Nah, I think I'll keep my hope. No hopium, no copium. <laughs> I hope you, to make you, hell you worse. You just said Dante. You just said Dante like you're referencing Dante's Inferno. Because I was. <laughs> And then I was like, abandon all hope who enter here. <laughs> if, uh, if you die in Arlen, do you go to Hank Hell? <laughs> Probably. Hank Hell. <laughs> <laughs> I regretted that joke as I made it. That wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. First off, I don't live anywhere near that place. Second off, I'm not even gonna respond to that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <sighs> oh. No, I'm in. I'm in South Texas. I'm near the border. I don't know dick about American geography. I got. I'm not gonna lie. You could tell me anything, and I'll believe it. I don't know where Arlen okay. is in Texas, and I don't know where Texas is in America. <laughs> Frankly, all I know is that y'all are relatively south from me. <laughs> Okay, so Texas is like the bottom of America. Like, Texas is where it touches Mexico. Okay. <laughs> it touches Mexico. It is a bad <laughs> touch. <laughs> a real bad touch. I mean, it did give us text, Max. Anyway, speaking of Mexico, Chupacabra. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> the goat sucker. Chupacabra. The Man, goat I... sucker. I don't know if you guys saw this recently, but I, I, I think it got scrapped, but essentially... Um, uh, Hollywood decided to continue making, like, tr like, just finding other, like, horror 
or like folklore things to make horror movies from and they decided to try and gentrify the chupacabra and they just called the movie la chupa but they didn't realize it. <laughs> that's that's Spanish slang for calling someone a cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> I think I downloaded the wrong Ch- El Chupacabra movie. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> yeah. Man, I know there's actually it, great. There is a series of Chupacabra movies out there. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Yeah, <laughs> dude, there's a movie where Smoothie the Pooh's a serial killer and get, gets shown to fucking fourth graders. So, no, oh yeah. Ironically, my, my, my first exposure to the Chupacabra was The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Right. I think mine was Martin Mystery. That's also valid. But I, I really, like... Billy and Mandy was on some bullshit sometimes, but they really did a good job of making the Sorry, Chupacabra look terrifying. They did a good job of making a lot of stuff look terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I, I, I always thought it was so weird, because I feel like the Chupacabra is, like, their their equivalent of I got drunk and lost the sheep. It's like, <laughs> fuck, one of my goats is gone. Uh it got eaten by this fucking thing. It has <laughs> it, no blood. Yeah, it's like... You're, it's you're, you know, the chupacabra has been proven to be a mangy coyote, right? Yeah. No, right. really? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently there's like two different types of chupacabras. There's the chupacabra in the states that looks like a mangy coyote. And then there's the fucking goblin alien looking shit in Puerto Rico. Would be Puerto Rico, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It... Like some oh, of the. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing things about it. Yeah. Okay, so there, it, it, there's there's like a 2018 a 2017 thing that someone took a picture of a fucking coyote in coyote in the Carolinas. And people were like, oh, what is that? It looks like a monster. And people were like, oh my god, it's Chupacabra. And then they're like, no, it's a coyote with mange. Yeah. I remember there was like a lot of news stories about, uh, you know, people si- seeing these manging coyotes. And, you know, the headline is always, Chupacabra spotted in Texas border. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even on, even on the Wikipedia page for, for uh, Chupacabra, under appearance... So... There are two sort of renditions. One is like a scaly, a scaly, like, weird, like a scaly creature, re- semi reptilian, with like quills down its back. Yeah. Um, and then the other is just dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, coyote. Yeah. Just a good boy. Uh, like, with some cryptid sightings, it makes it a little harder to, uh,. <laughs> not believe or just write it off as a hoax uh, which is kind of the reason why i chose mothman initially for the uh the single topic discussion because mm. the interesting thing about uh the that first mothman sighting back in the let me check my wiki page really quick the 60s uh the first night it was cited so it was cited by two different parties there was a group of couples that were taking a joyride and they were like chased by it, uh, and apparently the same night, uh, someone else uh, spotted it, and uh, you know, when the couple came out and said, "Oh, we saw this thing," this other guy just came out and said, "Oh, th- that's the same thing that I took my dog and killed it." Uh, Unfortunately, that's also something coyotes do too. So that's that's pretty strong. Oh, also, I'm talking I, about I was Mothman. I was reading more I'm talking Mothman, about Mothman, like, Mothman by the way. <laughs> Wait, wait, what? I-, I was talking about Mothman. <laughs> oh, sorry, Discord ate that. I didn't hear that. I thought we were still on Chupacabra. Oh, it, it, yeah, no, sorry. It's like, with Chupacabra, I think it's easier to disprove, because like you said, Maging Coyote is, is like the video evidence. But Well, because with- I'm literally seeing a thing here where it's like, there were there was like a mass killing of like a bunch of people and livestock in India, and like oh. it, this, it matched the Chupacabra's MO to a, a T. And, like, a bunch of people were like, this is exactly what the Chupacabra does. I think they blamed and then that an on investigation, something else. An investigation yielded that it was a pack of street dogs. Yeah, yeah. They just, like, mauled them to shit, and, like, they essentially all bled out. Actually, now that you bring Which is why up... they were bloodless by the end of it, so... Yeah. Actually, you bring up India, because this kind of brings up another topic that I have on here. Unknown cryptids, or lesser-known cryptids. 
Uh, by chance, have you guys heard of the Monkey Man of India? I have not. Uh, that sounds a little on the that nose. Does it does really sound a little yeah. on the nose, yes, but, uh, okay, I don't think it's called the Monkey Man of India. Hold up. Also, doesn't... Come on. That... <laughs> we thought Bigfoot was racist. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> By the way, it's... I uh... guess... <laughs> Lesser known I cryptids, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, there was, like, this story of, uh, of this unusual-looking, uh, monkey. Uh, it was like a tamarin or something. And it had, like, a metal head, uh, a vest on, and it was, like, killing multiple people in India. Just, you know, tossing them off the roofs of their houses. That was super lovely. I'm sorry, it had a vest on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was Hit Monkey? <laughs> Deadpool's sidekick? <laughs> but maybe. I mean, it was tossing people off roofs. I guess it was doing its job. <laughs> Miles, fucking Metal Adam on out here. It's Metal Adam. <laughs> Actually, Edamon's rookie is a monkey man in a vest. Well, damn. Oh man, it is called the mo it's called the Monkey Man of Delhi. <laughs> okay, a brief history according to the wiki. In May 2001, reports uh, reports circulated in New Delhi, India, concerning a monkey-like creature that attacked people at night. Eyewitnesses uh, eyewitness accounts were often inconsistent, but often described the creature as about 4 feet, 120 centimeters tall, covered in thick black hair, with a metal helmet, metal claws, glowing red eyes, and three buttons on its chest. What? What the fuck? Three buttons on its chest? So yeah. it was a murderous ragdoll? <laughs> Hold up, there's, there's like an artist in... <laughs> Oh, oh please yes. show me how me... an artist would interpret yeah, this. Yeah, give me the artist. <laughs> this is what the wiki gave me. Oh it's a doll. <laughs> the police say this creature is 4'6". Okay. Uh, I, so... love, I, love how the, I love how the difference between the police reports and the eyewitnesses is a whole foot of height. <laughs> That's yeah. not a small margin. Yes. Some reports also claim that it wore roller skates. <laughs> Others, however, describe the monkey man as having a more vulpin snout and being up to eight feet tall. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that this one's uh, this one's a bust. <laughs> yeah. That incredible. looks like a, a fucking teddy bear. It does. Oh, fantastic! There's a list of cryptids here. Five nights at Freddy's. Cryptid whales? Excuse me? Cryptid whales? Uh, like that's the, the lonely whale. So it's like the. the oh no, I know whale. what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. That's the only cryptid whale I know of, at least. Oh, fantastic. They have them in categories there's aquatic and semi aquatic, terrestrial. Uh, terrestrial whales. <laughs> why is hominid in its own category? Get Ambulocetus in here. <laughs> okay, fantastic. For flying, we have Jersey Devil, Mothman, Rod, Ropin, and uh, Thunderbird. <laughs> Thunderbird. I just saw the first couple episodes of Gamera. I like the Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah. Cryptobotany. Cryptobotany. It's the plants, though. It's just a plant. It's just a plant. What? Yeah. What kind Your of plant point. would be cryptid, though? <laughs> there. Uh, okay. Uh, still super... undiscovered species of large carnivorous plants. It's people who saw Little Shop of Horrors and wished it was real. Why <laughs> that plant's a dick? Yeah, it's it's people that imagined. But what if there was a Venus human trap? Bup, bup, <laughs> bup. Man, really that's wanted that poison ah. ivy fantasy. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Listen, we already know why that's a bad idea for a video that isn't even out yet. <laughs> God, I don't even... Yeah, I'll release this for Halloween, I guess. <laughs> you can put people to sleep a little bit easier. <laughs> nah, release it for Christmas. Do it to them. 
My favorite cryptid, Santa Claus. <laughs> As we're talking about this, Lucy has brought me her shark toy. She's like, talk about Megalodon. <laughs> okay, Megalodon is probably dead. The end. Yeah. Bro, I talked to like this uh, highly regarded scientist, paleontologist, and he said Megalodon is still alive. You know, so it's Leviathan. Oh, uh, yeah, the... Leviathan is the Bible. <laughs> Dude. Yes, uh, Meg Megalodon is actually uh, the Leviathan from Bible fame. No, I'm talking about the whale that used to fight Megalodon. <laughs> yeah. Moby Dick? Pretty much. Yep. By it the way... It was just a sperm whale the size of Megalodon that existed at the same time. Yeah, so, so just so you know, what Miles is saying is not bullshit. There was actually a prehistoric whale called Leviathan. Huh. Yeah. What about was, very, on, uh, very on the nose, the... Paleo people? What no, yeah, exactly. because Leviathan was taken. They wanted to name it Leviathan, but that was used for a no longer aquatic dinosaur. Yeah, hold up, uh, Liv. What was that whale that existed after the uh, Cretaceous period? Wait, all whales? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's this whale, and it was gigantic and, like, super carnivorous. It was, like, basically a a shark, but a mammal. And it was, like, 50 Ow. feet long. It, it's probably Leviathan, by the way, it's also, that's how you pronounce it. No, I mean, it's pronounced it. something else. Oh, Leviathan, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, honestly. It is actually pretty awesome. Yeah. It is believed to be one of the biggest macro-raptorian predators to have ever existed. <laughs> oh, I love that representative in it, uh, that uh, fucking artist rendition. That's cool as shit. Yeah. These Good things... old... Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't the only toothed whale like that. <laughs> this was a toothed whale, too. Yeah, there were a lot of toothed whales back then. They were stacking up against Megalodon. <laughs> How do we combat it? We fight teeth with teeth. Of all, brethren. Damn. 2010 discovery, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's relatively new. Yeah, that is new. Man, if... It's funny because out of all the cryptids, Leviathan is probably the most likely to exist. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> Sorry, the, what about the, the, the bloop? The, the dog the just bloop. put her toy on my lap and then bit it, and then bit me through the toy. It's literally just a glacier. But it's a but sick glacier. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Okay, The so, bloop. Yeah, it was the sound picked up by... What was it? Uh, the National Oceanic Atmospheric... Administration. Noah? Yeah, I think it was Noah. Uh, and oh, yeah, I'm it, seeing this. Wow, these images look stupid. Yeah, it's not... It, it was a sound that was recorded on one of their undersea microphones. And the reason why it was so prevalent is because it was... Uh, the sound was such a high register. Uh, it was the belief that it came from a large creature, but it was soon debunked and it turned out to be just uh, shifting ice sheets or something like that. Yeah, that's all I'm seeing here. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... But they were pretty dope ice sheets. Yeah. <laughs> made made a big booming sound and everyone just freaked the fuck out. It's like, oh, Jesus. It's Godzilla. Also, that's a terrible it. name for a creature. The bloop? Oh no, the, the bloop, bloop is the name of the sound itself. But a lot Not of people synonymize it with a creature, but yeah. Miles, isn't this like the fucking plot of, of Surface? Yeah. Miles, you saw Surface? Yeah. Oh my god. Another one. <laughs> 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 okay okay with that in mind how many of these cryptids do you think are placental mammals and but clearly aren't all of them my favorite is the mongolian death one. <laughs> that is a pretty good one yeah mm. my favorite placental mammal 
<laughs> oh man. Wait, Mokella Bay is a uh, an aquatic? Semi aquatic. It's supposed to only have been witnessed like semi submerged in the Amazon River. Yeah. Oh my huh. god, the the Loveland Frogman. <laughs> Yes, it's Wednesday, okay. my dudes. <laughs> What's that one cryptid? It's a Canadian cryptid, like a North American one. Um, it's like a sad little frog man that cries and melts. Oh. Uh, what? Wait, hold up. Canadian. It's disgusting frog looking. Man, cryptid. All I'm getting is Loveland Frogman. <laughs> How do you spell cryptid? Uh, C R Y P T I D. Okay, you said it all at the same time. I have C R Y E. C R Y P. C R Y P. T I D. T I D. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the mother. The the squonk. Wait. The squonk. S Q U O N K. Oh my god, you're fucking kidding me. Look at oh, this fucking thing. Him. He is beautiful. I made him in D&D. <laughs> He's not Canadian. He, well, I, okay. In D&D. In D&D, in &D, one of my friends plays a mimic named Squonk. <laughs> what is this? Pennsylvania <laughs> celebrates the Squonk at Squonkapalooza. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like... <laughs> Squonk. I'm pretty sure this is one of the titans in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Motherfucking squonk. <laughs> Titanus squonkus. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking at this and it, it is not a frog. That is like a dog pig. <laughs> it changes. Sometimes it looks like a mole, sometimes it's just like a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see this thing as a dude. Oh god, too late. <laughs> They, uh, I'm sure you've all saw this image, but... Yeah, aww. Gaze upon him. He melts into a puddle when he gets sad. I, I feel sorry for him. And he gets sad because he's ugly and he knows it. Oh, man. It's the, it's the ugly barnacle story all over again. Apparently people think it's caught because they have a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> The sad life of the squonk. <laughs> oh. That's incredible. Yeah. Alright, so I think we've talked uh, a good amount of creatures that we think... Alright. Oh, thylacine I... is on the list of cryptids. Yeah, it's, again, it's like the miscellaneous appropriation of the word cryptid. I mean, cryptozoology, you know. It's pretty much in the same boat as Megalodon, I guess. A species once went extinct, still believed to be alive today. The dude made. I found a dude like a thing where it's just a guy picked a bunch of different cryptids and associated them with personality types. <laughs> Tag yourself. I'm Chupacabra. <laughs> the Montusk monster, small and chubby, looks angry, but's really just tired. Their favorite channel is Cartoon Network. Can't swim. Bigfoot. <laughs> The friend who buys you things just because will eat an apple and call it a dinner. <laughs> Points out every animal they see. <laughs> the thylacine loves their friends but feels lonely. Aww. Thinks about space a lot. <laughs> Gets excited about cool t-shirts. Doesn't feel important. These are adorable. But it's very important. <laughs> These are so adorable. <laughs> God damn <laughs> Now I kind of want the... these things to exist. <laughs> yeah. Space or lizard man. Thunderbird is annoyed by small children, picky eater, phone is filled with pictures of lizards, cries during <laughs> Ghibli movies. <laughs> Dad jokes. jokes. <laughs> That's great. I. Uh, it looks like I'm the Thunderbird. <laughs> I it's I can't deny it. It's like it got me to a T. Oh, so so there there I'm looking now and I'm seeing there are uh, there are a handful of like Canadian cryptids that all just seem to be lake monsters that are ripping off of each other. Yeah. So a lot of them are uh, just native legends because so they, so there's there's 
there's the Ego Pogo from Lake Simcoe, Ontario. There's okay, the Manipogo I know that one. from Mani There's the Manipogo that's in Manitoba, and there's the Ogo Pogo from Okanagan. Oh, never mind. I know the Ogo Pogo. My mom punked me, and I thought it was real for years because of it. Oh man. <laughs> I was like a really young kid, and like part of the legend for the Ogo Pogo, or at least part of what they told me, was that it likes watermelons. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was making a sand volcano on the beach. And I had a bucket full of water and watermelon in it that I was trying to use the watermelon to dye the water red. <laughs> right. Uh, like, to stay in the water to put in the volcano. And my mom kept telling me to, like, get rid of the fucking watermelon in the bucket, and I wouldn't. <laughs> so then she stole it and was like, you just missed it. Yogo Pogo took it. I thought that shit was real for, like, five years. <laughs> Because I didn't see her sneak up and do it. Oh my god. That's great. That's great. No, the Michi I I'm just on the list of cryptids. The Michigan dog, man. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, one, that one's more paranormal than anything. It only shows up every seven years. It'll it's get dog, nigga. Part. Let's go. <laughs> hey, he's actually apparently supposed to appear either, uh, I think, next February. Well, according to Legends, he appears in a 10 year cycle that falls on years ending in seven. Huh. Okay, so not recently, not next year. <laughs> so, actually, talking about the Michigan dog, man, I know of this one story, this one family counts of uh, their house being stalked by a pack of wolf-like creatures. Uh, I only bring this up because spooky season is a generally creepy story. <laughs> of course, go on. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll just do a quick summary because it's been a while since I've listened to it. But basically, uh, there was this gent named Eric Martin. You could even look up his name and just, you know, type in Eric Martin Werewolf and the story will pop up. Anyway, so one day, our poor man threw out his back and he pretty much couldn't work anymore. So he, his wife, and... Practically their entire family, not extended family, moved to this uh, country house. Uh, and uh, they pretty much lived there and had a simpler life. Uh, anyways, one day they saw lights in the forest. Now, you know, insert, you know, cryptids being connected to aliens and higher dimensional beings here. Just anyways, so, you know, Martin... Uh, Eric and his son decided to go check it out, uh, but, uh, you know, the lights just ceased. And they initially thought, okay, it's probably poachers, which maybe that's the case. Uh, so a month goes by, and uh, he and his wife, they have this little tradition where at the end of every day, they just, you know, wait out at the balcony and have a cup of coffee. Uh, but on this day, they kind of noticed something a little peculiar. Everything is dead silent, not even crickets are chirping. Uh, and then they start noticing like movement in the tree line. So to give you an idea of how uh, it's laid out, so you have the property that's in, this, in the middle of this field. And I think it's about uh, a good distance away uh, before you hit the forest, this tree line. I think maybe 100 yards give or take, maybe even more than that. <clears throat> Anyways. So they started noticing these things kind of like moving around in the forest. And then eventually it's revealed to be this kind of like dog looking thing. And then another one shows up. And then another one shows up. Then another. Then another. And uh, because they do this uh, near the end of the day, it just starts getting dark real quickly. So in a panic, they kind of grabbed everyone that was outside into the house and they start turning off the lights. Uh, trying to uh, hide from these things. And these things are very... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Confident? They rock up on this property. Uh, the family kind of realize, ah, shit, we might have fucked ourselves because, uh, you know, the only thing stopping these things from getting in is pretty much the panes of glass on their windows and doors uh, to keep them outside. So, you know... The whole night, they're just up, watching these things stalking the house. And just waiting for an opportunity to like make a beeline for their car and just get the hell out of there. 
Um, and apparently they've heard noises like on the roof, uh, on the floorboards, on the balcony, just all over the place. They just hear and see these things. Eventually, the night ends. Everyone just leaves the one corner of the house that they were all hunkered in and just hightailed it out of there. I'm pretty sure I didn't do the story much justice. Uh, it was very much a summary, but uh, this guy tells it. This is uh, where I heard the story from. Hmm. Yeah. Does anyone else have a scary story they'd like to share? <laughs> I've literally seen that video before. Yeah. No, of um, course you have. <laughs> dude, I'm certifiedly horrified of werewolves. I watch as much of that kind of media as I can. Yeah, know your enemy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Actually fucks me up sometimes. Like, Because yeah. like, the, the lack of sleep I get, I'll get hallucinate. Like, yeah. I'll hallucinate sometimes. <laughs> fucks me right up. Honestly, dude, same. I have some of the most surreal dreams every now and again. See, I I'm... When, when when I first moved into, like, where I live now, because I'm... Across the street from me is a big fuck-off park that is full of just, like, terrible animals. Coyotes. Um, yeah. So, like, when I first moved into this house, like, maybe a few months after I got my dog, uh, I walked up to my front door, I saw my dog sniffing something, and there was a whole-ass raccoon just standing next to her sniffing her. These, like, the animals are completely fearless, and also I've been, I've been, like pursued by coyotes multiple times yeah. on the street. So, like, when I've got to take my dog out at night, I have a military-grade flashlight, and I'm checking for eyes. And, like, there are times where it's like, hmm, that's eight sets of eyes in the park. You're gonna piss tomorrow, Lucy. <laughs> and yeah. I have some wonderful nightmares on those nights. Yeah. Every now and then, I, too, have the general fear of, you know, if I let Bo out. And, you know, everyone is surprisingly a little too complacent. Everyone in my family except me, I'm always paranoid whenever we let Bo out and no one's watching him, especially at night. So, yeah, I could imagine, oh, yeah, and, and, like, your big yeah. property. And... Yeah. Yeah. Like, Obi is fine. He can take care of himself, but at the same time, he's stupid, so... <laughs> yeah. He would... And also, like, he's playful, which is a problem, yeah, because coyotes yeah. are fucking bastards. Yeah, they'll pretend to want to play. And... No, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's one of their hunting tactics with dogs, actually. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, giving them a false sense of security, playing around with them, only to lure them into, like, a kill corner. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, what There was an apartment is... building, I, when, the, when the coyotes first started encroaching, I there was a, a apartment building I used to live at, and uh, there was a lady in my building who, uh, she was walking her shih tzu in the park. A coyote walked up to it, decided it could take her, and it obviously the dog was on the leash. It walked up, it grabbed the dog, ripped its fucking head off, took the body, and left. Yep. To be free of the leash. Coyotes are fucked. Yep. They are. Long story short, the surrounding, like, the house surrounded by animals, I'm like, that could be coyotes or adjacent, but, like... Yeah. That maybe, it's still, like, they did the right thing to dip. Maybe the real cryptids <laughs> were the coyotes we saw along the way. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you kill them and they start breeding more. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? <laughs> that's fucked up. Oh man, there's a predator here. Here's an idea. Let's outnumber it. <laughs> it's like, oh, something's been killing a lot of us in this area? Put out pheromones to increase litter sizes. Yeah. yeah it's... Oh man. But yeah, it's like, uh, this story from Eric Martin, it... it... That's, like, one story that kept me up at night. Another story is not necessarily a cryptid story, but it was a creepypasta. You guys are familiar with the rake, right? No. Uh, really? I've, I've heard the so name, I, but I think I need so a refresher. So, when, cre when creepypastas, like, started, I watched a few of them, and a lot of them, I, a lot of them were shitty. Yeah. So, like... I just got a lot of boring, like, same old, like, man, man hand, door, hook, hand, car shit. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I just gave up on ever paying attention to them. Yeah. It's funny with the rake, because I feel like every time the story is told... I know when David told me the story initially, he was, like, hyping it up. It's like, oh, man, this, scare this story really freaked me out. And, you know, to give you a brief summary, basically, uh, a couple with their child are 
sleeping in their home, everything's fine, when all of a sudden, uh, one of the parents wake up to this thing sitting on the edge of their bed, uh, and it's looking at them dead in the eyes, and to describe it, it's like a tall, taller than usual humanoid. By the way, this is a creepypasta, it's not an actual crypto story, it's just an online right. st- Yeah, so it's all fake. So anyways, this thing is or just... Is it? Looks like I got some competition. Grab shotgun. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, this thing is just looking at uh, the parents. And, you know, one of the parents just kind of freak out and tries to wake up the other, but they won't wake up. And to describe the thing, it's like a tall, lanky humanoid with elephant-like skin, sunken in eyes that is just pure black. And, uh, you know, it's just staring at them. Anyways, the thing just crawls away, and the parent that is awake is, um, they're, you know, have a sigh of relief, and then they realize, wait a minute, it's heading for our daughter's room. And just as they thought that, uh, a scream can be heard, thing scuttles away, parents barge into the daughter's room and uh you know she simply says his name is the rake and then she dies <laughs> now i only bring this story up because every time uh like david admitted that when he heard it he was freaked out when i heard it, i was like ah oh, that that's pretty cool but then a me- <laughs> he told me this at a party so we we're just kind of going around the house but then when i went up the stairs and there's like a dark room it's like ah Fuck. <laughs> and then uh, had the brilliant idea to tell the same story to a friend of mine while we we're walking home at the middle of the night. And he's like, oh, damn it, dude, you just had to tell me the story while we're in the m- walking back home at night. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the story usually has a visceral effect on people that hear it. <laughs> Does anyone else have a scary story? <laughs> One time I saw an alien abduction. Go on. And I was probed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you I woke the... up in my I woke up in my pastor's house. <laughs> Clearly he saved me. <laughs> the power hey, of God is perfect. surreal. <laughs> God. Oh man. Well, I feel like we're losing a bit of steam, so... <sighs> How do we wrap this up? Copyright strike! The perfect way to end the video. Okay, I think I'll end this off with one last story. So, are you guys familiar with Skinwalker Ranch? Yes. Not familiar. Sorry, I wouldn't Skinwalker say. Ranch. Yes, it's a place. It's a ranch that's owned by the U.S. government. That a bunch of like paranormal activity goes on. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Nathan, you know the uh, basic information around it. There's like sites of like Skinwalker and UFOs, all kinds of stuff on that. place. They've even seen, like, uh, what's it called? The uh, I'm not sure, but there's also a lot of Native American folklore that yeah. goes into that. Yeah, too. so, yeah, I'll, I'll summarize it real quick. So, first of all, the reason why it's called Skinwalker Ranch is um, it was actually named by the Native Americans that once lived in the area. They believed that uh, it was cursed. Uh However, I'm not really sure about the details beyond that. Uh, however, to this day, I believe it's one of the most paranormal hotspots in the entire world. Because uh, initially, back in the 80s, there was just all sorts of phenomenon happening there. Like orbs, unusual creatures, uh Cattle mutilations, animals just being killed or atomized into nothing. <laughs> it's just a really weird um, activity that was happening in that property. And uh, 
you know, it just got so bad to the point where uh, this multi-millionaire, I forget his name, but uh, he, like, started his own space program, I think? Not uh, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, in case you're wondering. <laughs> but anyways, uh, they ended up buying the property, and they got on a collection of scientific skeptics. So people who could, you know would be most against these uh, phenomenon and they just staked out this entire place they had cameras they took pictures they did video uh there was like 24-hour surveillance on the property uh they all lived in like little camps around the area i believe and these skeptics just straight up see these phenomenon and are like jesus christ i don't know what the fuck that is <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's like, um, it's a pretty prevalent area, and I'd argue that maybe what's happening there might be legitimate. Keyword, might. <laughs> and, uh, the same guy did a similar video on it, so. Hmm. So, I, I, I will say, all of the, all of the cryptozoology stuff, it's like, as, as much as... As much as all this stuff is, like, all, almost entirely unsubstantiated, um, from a scientific standpoint, and, like, obviously, like, cryptids, cryptids, for the most part, are, like, they're fun. It's fine. Obviously, don't gonna believe in them, but, like, in terms of, like, scientific evidence and trying to prove some of these things, cryptozoology, in general, is rooted in pseudoscience. Yeah. And, like, reviles the scientific method. Yeah. So when I hear it's like, oh, they got scientific skeptics in to investigate this thing, and even they believe it's like, eh, eh. eh. But even then, beyond that, like, it there's sort of like a, a there's a a bias, a negative bias going on. So even if there was to be really, really, really solid evidence for some kind of cryptid, it's not going to get published in a scientific paper. Because yeah. no article worth their salt would ever publish anything about a cryptid. No, yeah, for sure. So it, it's sure. very, like, that's why, like, it's really regrettable, but mainstream news is the closest we'll get to proving any of this shit. Yeah. Because God knows it's just never, ever going to end up on, like, an actual scientific paper. Yeah. <laughs> it is a case of, uh, it's kind of unfortunate, really, because let's say these things do exist, and one of us do end up seeing it. Uh, like, no one's gonna believe any of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And without non-horrible 4K footage. <laughs> yeah, I think that's another thing. In, in the age where we have, you know, phones and, you know, a little computer, essentially, in our pockets 24-7, that can instantly connect us to the internet, that can access information or deliver information in a near instant... Um, you'd figure that by now we'd have some kind of concrete evidence. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it's like... Well, the reason why we don't have the evidence is, like, again, it, it's part of, like, it's twofold. Partly it's because the people that desperately want to believe the cryptids are real have been told no by science yeah. so much that they've rejected the scientific method, which means scientists won't trust it. Right. And then vice versa, no scientist... Like, the reason why, beyond that, we haven't used the scientific method is because no scientist worth their salt would ever dare spend money on this research. Yeah. If, 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 if a funded researcher tried to scientifically research cryptids, they'd never get a dime of funding for the rest of their life. Their career no, yeah, would basically yeah, be exactly. over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because hey, your, you, you, you your body of work you, stays with you forever in science. Yeah, you lose Good a lot of credit. Yeah, you lose a lot of credibility if you say, "Oh, I saw a Bigfoot in my front porch," and you know yeah. it's not only with scientists, but also I've heard stories of people that kept up with the uh, with their testimony, saying that they did see something, and that ultimately ruins their lives more than improves. Um. Which is kind of a shame, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it's just... <laughs> I well, hate I to say it's it, the it, way it's, it is, it's, but it's, it's the way it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's stigmatized because, like, I mean, again, 
it's very easy to be like, oh, these fucking dumbass rednecks and they're fucking, oh, I saw Sasquatch. Oh, yeah, okay, buddy. <laughs> but, like, y- y- you know, like, uh, eh. Yeah. There's both sides to it. Like, but, like, I'm yeah, sure it, some it, of these people saw something. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. But bears are big. <laughs> yeah. And can walk on two feet sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's I think we've all had this moment where we get this sudden shock when we are seeing something and then our brains just kind of go a million miles per hour trying to comprehend what we're looking at. There have been many uh occurrences where I got surprised by something because I'm just, you know, doing something else, just minding my own business, autopilot, and then something happens or occurs, and I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck do I do? And I just go through everything in my head. Yeah. A million miles an hour. And before I yeah, have so, time to process it, I've come to a conclusion. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I have got a perfect example of that. Fucking, I have two dogs. One is Lucy, she's a Border Collie. The other is an American Bulldog, Molly. She's completely black. Yeah. I open the door. I'm going to take Lucy to go to the bathroom. Lucy's a very, like, overreactive dog, so if I ever, if there ever was a coyote out front, she'd bark at it. Yeah. So, like, I open the front door. I turn on my military-grade flashlight. Directly in front of me is two glowing eyes and nothing else. Lucy doesn't react at all. So instantly, I'm like, oh my god, there's eyes. I see the eyes. Lucy doesn't see it. She can't detect it. Oh my god, it's a fucking monster of some kind. It's like, like, my limit, like you said, it's like some kind of fucking shadow creature. Like, two seconds pass. My eyes adjust. It's fucking Molly. She's <laughs> standing on my front porch. My own, my own fucking dog. Standing on my own porch, looking back at me. My flashlight reflected in her eyes. She's pitch black, so I didn't see the rest of her body for a minute. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, you see shit in the dark, and the human brain jumps to shit. Yeah. That's oh, just yeah. how it is. It's my dog that I see every fucking day of my life. Yeah. And instantly I thought, it, based on circumstantial evidence, my overreactive border collie is not freaking out, so she doesn't see it. But I see it, so it must be supernatural. It's a shadow monster. It's gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> it's the beings. It's Sasquatch from the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, it's Sasquatch that. come here to save my mortal soul. <laughs> As he does. Oh, man, yeah. Or use me. his big feet to trample on the Bible's teaching. <laughs> Evolution, I say not! <laughs> yeah, so but, like, yeah. It, 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 I, I'm sure... I hate to be the boring-ass scientist in the room, but like... I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for all these phenomena. You know, it's like what they say in Mystery Hunters. Things aren't always what they seem. Yeah. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> if you bad about the mystery hunters right here, right now, Miles, I will fight you. <laughs> One, I wouldn't. But also, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't remember their names, but don't you dare quote them. <laughs> I remember the guy's name was Araya. Yeah, Araya that. and... <sighs> it wasn't Diane, right? There was something basic. <sighs> okay, Google. <laughs> Mystery Hunter. This is the perfect note to end this. Mystery <laughs> Hunters. Uh, Christina and Araya. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then the, there was the, the older guy was Downing David. Dave. Downing Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Well, this just got fucking sensitized. Demonetized. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. We're not making money off of this to begin with. So, <laughs> the way you're I not see making it, money off this. I am. <laughs> the way I see it, in it. <laughs> the way I see it, uh, no gains or losses were made. So we are in a constant state of existence. <laughs> Financial limbo. Yeah. I'm gonna As buy. One might say. I'm gonna buy ten more figures in the next couple of months. <laughs> Nice. Nah, <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm running out of space. All right, yeah, I'm I'm running low on Steve. I'll see. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess we can call it here. Does anyone want to yeah. add anything before we uh before we jump off this cliff? Echoing silence. Fantastic. Yeah.
Are you just, still I suppose scaly? as a finishing note to all of our, you know, all three of our viewers, two of which are probably Rahul who are watching this. <laughs> um, don't trust the Wendussy. It's not <laughs> what it seems. Yeah. Man, we didn't even. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? Anyone else with closing remarks? No. Anyone? No. I okay. said my piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody, there you have it. Four skeptics in a room. No, sorry, three skeptics in a room, and the Pope in swag. <laughs> Push, <laughs> pushing his uh, his Bigfoot agenda onto us. How dare you? <laughs> God, I love that profile pic. But yeah, that is our episode. Nothing more to add beyond that. Have a happy and safe Halloween, and we'll see you all no, on November third. Bro, <laughs> you're a coward if you don't bite into the razor blade apple, <laughs> pussy. That's the real cryptid. Who gets <laughs> razor blades into candy without opening the wrapper? Flight of hand. <laughs> 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 Teleport. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. There are starving children in Africa that would love those razor blades. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody. Have a ha safe Halloween. And we'll see you yep. all on November 3rd for Godzilla Day. Bye. Till, <laughs> till next time. Bye.